Okay, we're back in action. We just recently searched an area to the northwest of Nashkel and to the west of Baragost. Managed to find Basilis, the mad uh, priest of Sirik. Managed to defeat him. We took his holy symbol, and as we recall, the Lathandans at the Song of the, or rather, the Temple of the Morning Song, were offering a substantial reward to uh, as proof of. Uh, Camaraderie, Basilis's death. Adventure and steel on steel. The stuff of legend. Right, Boo? So, we will go oh, and magic uh, turn that in. Magic does not well in a tired mind. But kicking for goodness! Alright, heading to the temple. I must rest. Now that's a case of unmarching you. <laughs> Party, you definitely uh, need uh, rest. So. Uh, I think much c c clearer with, with rest. Uh, uh, might we stop? I've just about seen enough waking our slave driver. Carrot can't take the complaints anymore. He's got to get this done quickly. Uh, I'm get of course. Turning in the holy symbol. I fear the pace we have set is too much for me. I must rest. By the morning, Lord, I see that you have the holy symbol of Basilus. It must have been a difficult battle to take down such a powerful man. Yours is a service that will not soon be forgotten. It is a pleasure to give you the full reward for which you have worked. To hear saying, yes, I would have expected such opulence from the Lathanderites in rewarding us. There is splendor and excessiveness in everything they do. Tis so, tis so out of balance. But all in all, at least they appreciate that a good deed has been done. Your help was indeed much appreciated. Kelgath biting his tongue and not <laughs> commenting on Jahir's rudeness. Wow. Hardy gaining a thousand experience and five thousand gold. It's a hell of a reward. Whew. Impressive. The sirens singing. Is there anything we need at the temple while we're you. here? I guess we could always buy healing potions. And just general supplies, since we have so much money now. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well. Jahira. And they're resting at the temple. She levels up and becomes a level 4 druid. Her saves go down by 1. She gains a few more spells. 4 hit points. Very nice. More spells are always a good thing. Okay. Yes? I do believe we're out of healing potions. Considering all the fighting the party has had to do recently, I don't think there's terribly much left. Yeah, there's still Melicanth the chicken, which we should turn into Thalantir to the west. And there's also a couple of magical items here that Kara needs to identify. Emuin will carry them for now. Makes sense if we bought oh, some healing yes. potions while we were here. Okay. How many? It's 101 each. It's by 10. I mean, it is a thousand gold, but it's hard to put a price on healing. It's so important. Alright. So there's six of us. Maybe I should have gotten more than that. Oh, that'll do. At least the frontliners will get two each. Okay. One for Emlyn, one for Dine here, and two for Carrot. And actually, this potion of absorption grants complete resistance to electricity. This is actually something that Carrot should have. Considering that he has this a few charges of this wand of lightning, he could actually use that 
to uh, make sure he doesn't electrocute himself while using this uh, wand, considering the close call we had last time using it to just to kill Basilis. So, that seems like a good idea. And now we'll see if they can identify these magical items. Okay. And they are... Gauntlets of Fumbling. Elander's Gloves of Misplacement. With mischief in mind, the impetuous Elander set out to craft these cursed gauntlets to best arrival. It turns out his malice got the best of him when he mistook these gloves for another pair. Negative 10 penalty to Thaco, negative 2 to Dexterity. Only removed by a removed curse spell. Oy. Dangerous item. Uh, short sword plus 2, the Whistling Sword. Amidst the plains of the Eastern Shar, there lived a small human blacksmith whose nearly dwarven height did not do his soul justice. Though a skilled weaponsmith, his true gift was his ability to whistle a heartfelt song that could cause a grown man to cry like a newborn. Only a reclusive maid shared and enjoyed time with the diminutive man. However, as others could only see his small size as a source of amusement. Deaf to the smith's song because of their own prejudices, their ridicule slowly grew into cruel torment, which eventually persuaded the light-hearted man to leave his home forever. Before he left, he forged this weapon as a gift for his one, tr uh, his one friend, who also enchanted it during the making. Thus, the blade sweetly whistled to its wielder when unsheathed. It was not long after that that the mage also deserted the small town in disgust, taking the sword with him on his journeys. A plus two short sword. Mm. Excellent find for Renwin, replacing her uh, plus one. Short sword. Heck, maybe she can learn to dual wield someday. I don't know. What's this? Warhammer plus two. Ashidina. Lady Ashidina was a remarkable strategist who honed her skills against the orc armies in the year of the Black Horde. She met Dergat Gultun, the warrior that wielded this weapon, when he foiled an ambush led by the great orc Farstock, and soon after made him her field captain. After serving at each other's side for the entirety of the war, they fell in love and eventually married. Historians report that Dergot named his Warhammer after his bride to remind himself of the love he fought to protect. What Lady Ashidina thought of this is unknown. Karad would think that she would not be impressed by that, but uh, I don't know. That's just his, his intuition. It's a plus two Warhammer that does a little bit of electrical damage. I don't think anyone is actually proficient with Warhammers, though. That doesn't mean someone can't become proficient. Uh, let's see. I could give it to Khalid. Here can not use it. Emowyn can use it. Karen and kind of here now. Let's see. Minsk already has a magical flail. I guess we'll give this to Khalid. This can be his uh, his magical bludgeoning weapon if it is indeed required. Okay. Alright, I think we've uh, fiddled enough around here. We've got our items identified. We picked up healing potions. Let's head back to town and rest. And now that we are already here, kicking for once goodness. we do rest, we should go to Feldepost Inn and see if we can find Transic. Transic is the contact of. Oh, what the hell was that pig's name? That half orc we slew. Mullahay. Mullahay's letters indicated that he was in league with the bandits and he was working for someone named Tazok. Evidently, he was to evidently he was to communicate with Tazok through an intermediary named Transig, staying at Feldepos Inn, Bergost. Meeting with him should prove to be quite productive. <laughs> yeah, something uh, tells me that he'll be quite hostile. Which is a reasonable thing to suspect. Considering it's nighttime. Tricky wheel, you point, I punch. Hmm. Carrot, uh, Minsk saying, Carrot, can you talk less with Glorious Dining here in the evenings? Minsk and Boo have to stand guard and it makes him fairly sleepy. Boo explains some things to Minsk, but it's still hard to keep awake. And Bucky needs lots of cons. What was it, Boo? Consent? No, not that. Concentration. Hmm. 
Karen up being a little frustrated because they're all very tired after all this traveling, and he says to Minsk with a sigh, ask Gru to try harder. He might be able to convey the important point that when a man and a woman put their heads together and speak quietly, they deserve privacy. Minsk understands. Minsk's friend in Rashomon once met a lady, and they too wanted that privacy thing. Only the lady was not Minsk's charge. Ah, uh, next time we come to a market pool, you look for those little brown seeds that wake Minsk up. We will need many of those. I think he's talking about coffee beans. They're called? Oh, Tiny here chiming in. I envy thee for growing up in Candlekeep. Tis the place where the spirit of Alondo the seer wanders the grounds.